everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles framework. There's a theme that continues to surface as I work with leaders in the field. It connects to communication being one of our biggest obstacles in organizations. It's all in the way we position our words and engage in meaningful conversations. It's made me reflect on my own leadership practices and note some good common practices we can apply to communicate well, using key words to message and provide those messages. Is, it's, it's just important for us to do. It's also important to think about how we interact with others. The way we engage with people and the words we choose influence how people perceive our level of communication. There's so much to being a good communicator. In this episode, I provide several short tips I use to constantly remind myself on how to be a better communicator. Here's the first one. Think more, write less. You've heard me talk about this on a podcast. Think more, write less. Remember, Mark Twain once wrote, I didn't have time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long one. Mark Twain's quote perfectly captures the idea of think more, write less. The best messages are brief and intentional. Also, we're more successful at communicating when we spend time where it matters most. That time is in preparing and planning the message. Good communication occurs when we spend more time crafting and planning a message and less time talking. This isn't always easy, and it may be a shift in our mindset. We've not always placed crafting a message on our calendars like we do scheduling meetings. This added time saves time and heartache in the long run. Our messages become shorter, concise, clear. They're connected to why this message is important for people to hear. It's easy to begin crafting a message and get lost in the details. We want to share lots of information to keep our teams informed. The question, though, is do they need all that information? In our experiences working with leaders, we found that less is more. It's best to focus on what the audience needs to know rather than what we want to say. Remember, keep it simple. Spend time getting to the heart of the message and keep that focus. The second tip is pay ridiculous attention to people. You've heard me say that before on the podcast. Listen intently on what they are saying. Ask probing questions to learn more. Act where needed and follow up to close the loop. Look in their eyes and move computers and phones aside. At our quarterly strategy sessions, I have... I have one rule, put computers and mobile phones away and take notes using pen and paper. Why? Because only four times a year we gather together as an entire team and our job is to pay ridiculous attention to each other. That means give the person speaking our full attention. Actively listen, jotting down questions to make sure we understand. Focus on understanding what people are saying rather than thinking about what we want to say and summarize and confirm what we think we heard. Here's another tip. Turn someone's question back to them to answer. Someone comes to you with a question that you would like for them to think more about. Rather than you provide the answer, turn the question back to them. If they say they don't know, ask them what they would do if they did know. Nine times out of 10, the person will share their thoughts. Another tip, connect actions or changes back to input received. People want to know that their input matters. And that doesn't mean that people always get their way. They just want to know why decisions were made. Therefore, connect decisions back to the input provided and how that information played into a decision. As we described, we receive input from people on survey results. You've heard me talk about that before. And here's an example of how we connect our communication back to the input. 
we may say, you know, you may recall that when we rolled out those survey results, we talked about having more one-on-one -on -one meeting times with, with me. You talked about that. You asked me that. I appreciate your feedback and specific suggestion. And after hearing that feedback, I'm, I'm starting to schedule 45 minute monthly meetings with each of you. So let's talk then about how best we can use those 45 minutes. Now, when I talk in that way, I'm telling them that I listened to them and I acted in ways that are important to them and important to me. And I showed them how that connected back to the input that they provided on the survey. Another tip, challenge generalizations. We hear people make statements like, they believe, everyone feels. Our instinct is to react to these statements with a response. You know, instead ask, who are they? When you refer to everyone, who are you referring to? And getting more specific information helps the person be more specific with identifying where the problem is occurring. Also, it's important for leaders to stop using generalized statements to communicate. We want to be the model communicator, so we've got to stop doing that and speaking with generalizations as well. Here's another communication tip. Don't feel pressure to answer a tough question right away. Make sure you know the question that's being asked. Express you want to provide the best answer and you need some time to gather information that will help you provide the most helpful answer. Let people know when you'll get back with them, how you'll communicate it to them and follow up, follow up with that answer. Here's another tip. Personalized messages and invitations with the word you. I did a whole episode on this one tip. Writing a message that is authentic and includes the word you lets people know that they are the most important part of the message. At times we intend to make personal connections with our message. So including the word you throughout the message helps us do just that. Another tip, help employees carry their own messages. You know, have you ever heard someone carry a message like this to a leader? So the employee says to the leader, I'm here representing our team. The deadline for completion of the project was just unreasonable. That's why we didn't achieve the goal. And the leader then says, is that what you believe? And the employee says, no, that's not my individual opinion. I'm, I'm here for the team. And the leader says back, I want to hear what you believe. If others have an opinion, I need to hear that directly from them. What do you think occurred? Now, the leader puts the ball back in the court of this individual and the team. People learn to stop carrying message from others and become accountable for themselves. Another tip. Be as transparent as possible and consistently share relevant information to help people understand why actions are occurring, what is being done, and how we're moving forward. If there's information you can't share, tell them that. It's better to share what you can than to be evasive, share both good and bad news. People want leaders to be honest. We may not share information believing we are protecting employees from difficult news. Not communicating difficult news makes people feel anxious about their jobs. Another, communicate clear, simple messages. I can't overemphasize this enough. People respond better to simplicity. Verify that people understand your message by asking them what they heard. And finally, regularly communicate wins and bright spots. As we all focus on on wins we're, that are occurring every day in education, we can see so many good things happening. Make this type of communication intentional and recognize at least one win or bright spot a day. When you do, you may find you want to recognize more. It makes people feel good about their work and reinforces why they chose to be in this job, in the profession, and at this place of work. I hope these are helpful to you. These tips align to principle eight, communicate at all levels. It's one part of what builds effective communication in our organizations. And I continue to remind myself to practice these tips because there's such a tendency to move in a direction that's off base. 
So I hope in some way they're helpful to you as you continue to improve the way you communicate with others. Our What's Right in Education conference is right around the corner. I hope you'll join us there because you'll hear how the organizations are living the nine principles framework. Our partners are doing some fantastic work. The conference is on October 27th and 28th, right here in our hometown on Pensacola Beach. To learn more and register for the conference, go to studereducation.com slash events, and you'll see the conference, What's Right in Education, right on that page. You can also register for some free webinars, and we have some upcoming leadership topics that I think you'll be interested in. So let's end this semester strong. As always, I thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Performance. Feel free to share this episode with a friend or colleague you think today's topic will find meaningful. Also, we love hearing from you, so feel free to leave us feedback on the podcast. Head to Apple Podcasts to find and rate our podcast. I always look forward to connecting with all of you in this way. I hope that you'll reach out and connect to us. So thank you for being with us and learning more about the nine principles framework so that we can always be our best at work. Have a great week, everyone.